Snurdly is begging me. I swear, folks, I was going to start with Monica audio here. Actually, that's not what I was going to start with. I can't believe this. We are one of the few people talking about the 300 or more Nigerian girls kidnapped by Boko Haram. Which, when I hear that name, I think of a whiter shade of pale. Boko Haram, Procol Haram. But it's not who it is. It's a terrorist bunch. Hillary's State Department refused to designate them a terrorist bunch. From the Daily Beast. Hillary's State Department refused to brand Boko Haram as terrorists. Under Hillary Clinton, the State Department repeatedly declined to fully go after the terror group responsible for kidnapping hundreds of Nigerian girls. And that means they are what? They're African American. Well, they're African. They're black. That's not a terror group this bunch is. It's a strange article to see in the Daily Beast. You think maybe in the Daily Caller or Breitbart, but this is in the Daily Beast. But why only blame Hillary? Obama could have overruled her for crying out loud. And if you listen to Obama, you know, he is here. He's out here, folks. This is an absolute. I mean, I my travel schedule has been such that I haven't been affected travel-wise. Have you guys been affected travel-wise? My, I haven't either. But, man, it is sickening to read in the media out here what's going on. It's just it's just sickening. It's depressing. It, it, it It's another collection of stuff that just doesn't make sense. The people... Bending over forwards and backwards to be with this guy, you would think would run as, as far from him as they could get. And they can't get, they can't wait to just get close. It just it boggles the mind. Anyway, so we've been unaffected by that and, and travel wise, but it's been interesting to see how the local constabulary has gotten prepared for the visit. For the uh, the president. Anyway, he's out of here today, right? And he heads down to San Diego, then up to San Jose. He's a, <clears throat> it's a big fundraising uh, swirl, and he's been given a bunch of uh, awards along the way. I mean, I, I, I just, it doesn't compute, folks. You take a guy who gave the speech he gave in Cairo, and the people giving him awards out here last night, None of it makes any sense. You literally go crazy if you spend any time trying to logically understand it. Because there isn't any logic. It's just pure 100% politics and groupieism. Rich people willing to pay to be close to power, no matter who holds it. Anyway, back to this Daily Beast story. It's really odd because this is a left-wing publication. That is making a big deal out of this group, Boko Haram, not being branded as terrorists. This is the same bunch that did not want to admit that it was a terror attack that killed four people in Benghazi. This is the same bunch that wants everybody to believe that they have vanquished Al-Qaeda, that they have vanquished terrorism. Talk about living in a dream world. State Department under Hillary Clinton fought hard against placing the Al-Qaeda militant group Boko Haram on its official list of foreign terror organizations for two years. And now lawmakers and former U.S. officials are saying the decision may have hampered the American government's ability to confront the Nigerian group that shocked the world by abducting hundreds of innocent girls. What in the world is shocking? That Al-Qaeda would commit acts of terror. What? Are we supposed to think that Mitch McConnell is going to grab a bunch of Republicans and fly over to Nigeria and kidnap the girls? Are they so caught up in this Republican war on women that they can't believe that left-wing terror groups would do it? Damn right of a left-wing terror group. You would, well, where else would you put Al-Qaeda on the political scale. Anyway, my, my point is, why just blame Hillary? Certainly Obama could have overruled her, and it, to hear him speak, uh, he talks about it, what Boko Haram has been doing has been on his mind constantly for years. That's what he's been telling these people. He's wondering, he's been so worried, and so concerned. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, I have to show you a couple pictures here on the Ditto Cam. 
And I'm not going to be able to zoom it or any of that, but I think, I think you'll get close enough. It's actually one picture printed twice here, and it's unbelievable. And I just, but when I, before I show you this, I want to ask you, what message does this send? And then I want to ask you, is the United States really this powerless? And then if you answer, yes, we are really this powerless, then isn't Obama to blame? By the way, speaking of that little minor detour, Dan Henninger yesterday to Wall Street Journal had his uh, his weekly column. And like everybody, he's just been watching in stunned amazement as the left, without any compunction whatsoever, just simply goes out and destroys people for saying things the left doesn't want to hear, doesn't like, like the guy at Mozilla, uh, Condi Rice at Rutgers, uh, things like that. And he blames it right. It is all made possible by Obama, every bit of it. And he cites a specific, it's all emanating from universities, and he he cites a specific compromise ruling at a specific university involving Title IX that sent the signal to every university in the country that they are free to engage in this fascistic behavior. So that's coming up, too. But this picture is of the First Lady. It's about what Boko Haram did. And it is a plea... To try to get the kidnapped girls returned. It is Mrs. Obama is in the diplomatic reception room of the White House, where I've been there many times. It's 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 uh, one of those popular entrances used for diplomats, guests, friends, and so forth. It's just, you go to the diplomatic reception room, take a left, and there's the elevator to the residence. It's, it's real close there. It's where Obama comes out and gets in a helicopter, all the presidents do. That's the diplomatic reception room in most cases. That's where this picture's taken. It looks like. I, I just think this is pathetic. I, 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 I'm just stunned. We got 300 Nigerian girls kidnapped by an Al-Qaeda group. And nobody cared or talked about it for a while. Hillary wouldn't call them a terror group. Now all of a sudden, for some reason, we're on a big push to get them back. And this is how... Well, you can't read this. It's, it's a plea for people on Twitter to get in gear and bring the girls back. It's Hashtag bring back our girls. Apparently there's a Twitter, what do you call them, handle? It's uh, the, the number sign, bring back our girls. It's a hashtag. Okay. Anyway, there's Mrs. Obama looking sad and grim. And the, the sad thing here is that the low information crowd that's puddling around out there on Twitter is going to think we're actually doing something about it. At least she, yeah, they say exactly, exactly. At least she's trying, Mr. Limbaugh. What are you doing? At least Mrs. Obama cares. At least they're trying to get them back. And here it is again. Let me get up closer. See it? Is that not pathetic? What the, what the hell message does that say? Imagine if bin Laden were still alive. Eamon al-Zawahiri. Can you imagine? They're laughing at this over in the huts and so forth, wherever they are. It is just unbelievable. Bring back our girl. They're Nigerian. Unless there's something that we don't know. But are we really this powerless? But the correct way to look at this is the audience that will see it, the Twitter low information universe. Oh, Miss Obama, at least they care. At least they're trying to do something. This is how if somebody sadly, unfortunately had a family member kidnapped, this is might be what they would do, right? Go to Twitter, bring back my daughter. I find it just sad. I mean, this is this is pathetic. The message this sends to uh, people around the world. The Taliban, the Taliban has been doing a lot worse to school girls than Boko Haram has. And Obama's negotiating with them in um, in Afghanistan. 